One of Sherlock Holmes' most villainous nemesis was actually an innocent man. Don't miss the new Audible original, Moriarty, The Devil's Game, a bold new addition to the Sherlock Holmes universe, starring Dominic Monaghan from the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Lost in the title role. Moriarty turns one of literature's most famous rivalries on its head. It pits genius against genius in an epic origin story that recasts Professor James Moriarty as a desperate fugitive framed for murder, hunted by dark forces, who will stop at nothing to exploit his brilliance. With Sherlock Holmes, Scotland Yard, and the British Crown closing in on him, Moriarty must confront the ultimate question. But what will it take to prove his innocence? And, if he succeeds, what will he become? What I personally loved about this particular story was just how much effort has gone into making it feel super immersive. The small details, like the sounds of chairs squeaking or someone shuffles during a discussion, or the clink of a teacup after someone has taken a sip, are all included to make the listener feel as if they are right there in the room. As someone who has spent a lot of time with sound effects, I can tell that some real effort has gone into this story, and it has really paid off. Moriarty, The Devil's Game it takes a villain to create one. Visit audible.com forward slash listen to Moriarty and listen now. So I've lived in the same house for nearly 20 years now. But my family has always said that they've seen or heard things, but... I never really did. That was until about one and a half years ago. I was home alone walking through to take a shower and I heard three loud knocks. I went to the door and there was no one there. So I go to jump in the shower and right as I put the shampoo in, there were three slamming knocks on the bathroom door like they were the police or something. I said, yeah, I'm in here thinking that my family had come back. Then I heard my name, Mark. I said, what? Then I hear, he's already here. Who's already here, I said. And no reply. I finish, I get up uh, out of the shower, and the house is completely empty. I call my family to see if maybe they left again, and they were still at the mall, and they hadn't come home. I tell them what happened and they say it happens to them all the time and I just didn't believe them. So, cut to a few weeks later, now I should tell you that I sleep in complete darkness, so I start waking up at like 3.33 every night with a feeling of dread and being watched. And when I open my eyes, even though it's pitch black, I can see a shadow right beside my bed and its head, if that's what you would call it, reaches to the ceiling and... I can feel it staring at me. I reach over and turn on the light and when I do, it's gone and the feeling of dread vanishes. This goes on for months to the point that I actually get used to it and ignore it altogether and just roll over and go back to sleep. Then I start hearing things moving around in my room in the dark, things being stepped on I could hear what sounds like someone sitting down on my couch because you can hear the springs compressing and the feelings of dread return. So I start sleeping with my fan on full burst so that's all I can hear. But again, it gets worse. I wake up at 3.33 as always. Dread overcomes me as I feel someone actually sit on the edge of my bed. At that, I jump out of bed and turn the light on, but... And I do, as always, there's nothing there. At this point though, I've had enough and I needed to take control. So a few days later, I was alone sitting in the living room watching Netflix. And I hear what sounds like someone running down the hall and then three knocks on my bedroom door. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but I stood up and yelled, This is my house, show yourself, I'm tired of you messing with me while I'm sleeping. I hear nothing. What are you afraid of? Come out, I say. Still nothing. That's when I think I really messed up, though. I screamed, You're just scared. You won't do anything to me because you can't do anything. This is my house. And some other stuff that I don't really remember. But that was when it got way worse. 
That night, I was sleeping and right beside my bed, there were three booming hard knocks and someone screaming, wake up. I jump up and run out to see what's wrong and everybody's asleep. I look at the clock and it's 3.35 so I start walking back to my room and I actually see a head pop out from the top of my door like someone is hanging upside down. No features, just darkness. I freeze. The paralyzing fear I felt is giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. It stays there for 20 to 30 seconds, then slowly goes back up out of sight. I wasn't going back in there that night after seeing that. I go to my living room and I sit on the couch with all the lights on. Then I hear a crash in my room, then I hear faint laughing and then silence. When the sun finally came up because I didn't sleep at all, I went back to see what that crash was and everything on my nightstand had been thrown down and was laying on the other side of the room. There were handprints where I had seen that face that had a greenish sort of glow to them. For the next month I was tormented almost nightly with shadows that seemed to be running towards me and then would vanish. Doors slamming behind me closing into a closet or basement. That really scared me too. Things would randomly disappear and then days or weeks later reappear in the middle of my bedroom floor. People were calling my name. Knocks all day and night. After a month of it getting worse and worse, I talked to someone who was into the paranormal things like this and they said that I needed to stop talking to it because I'm feeding it energy and it's getting stronger the more attention that I give it. So I just started acting like it didn't exist. And to my surprise, things have actually calmed down. But it's been over a year since it started and I still wake up all the time at either 3.33 or 3.35 and feel someone looking at me or someone sitting on my bed or walking down the hallway. But I ignore it these days and just roll over, cover every bit of my body except the top of my head and ignore it and go back to sleep. The knocks... They still happen all the time while I'm taking a shower and I'll hear hey or mark as I'm walking to the kitchen. I wanted to get a camera and put it in my room to see what happens but to be honest I'm kind of afraid of what I might see. Some friends and I had gone camping up a canyon in Utah. This was in 2020. Some creepy stuff had happened earlier in the night before I made it to the campground, so we were trying to relax, wind down, and have some fun like we had planned. We were in high school at this point, so we were doing stupid games like Truth or Dare and whatnot. It was me, four friends, and our friend's dog. Now, there was only one other group somewhat close to us, a couple and their dog, who set up their tent a few yards away from us. But they weren't close enough to interact with us at all, my friends and I were staying up and talking, laughing, etc. When at some point it sounded like someone's car alarm went off, maybe 5 or 10 miles up the canyon. The next campsite was pretty far away from ours. But we didn't really question the sound and just went about talking until we noticed that the sound had gotten noticeably closer. It happened gradually so we didn't notice it until it sounded like it was maybe even just a few yards away. The noisier that we were, the closer that it seemed to be getting to us. As we whispered amongst ourselves about what could be making the sound, it came closer and closer, and finally the noise was literally just outside of our tent, mere inches away from us. None of us dared speak or even move an inch in fear of compromising our safety. When we became quiet, so did the noise. After we were dead silent for a few minutes, the noise started up again and began to once again grow further away, until it sounded like maybe it was 10 miles away again. This happened in the span of like 10 or 20 seconds, mind you, but as the night went on, we would hear the noise travel around from campsite to campsite in almost no time at all. It didn't go away as well until about 3am, and we tried to stay pretty quiet for the rest of the night. 
Now, whatever made this sound traveled the span of roughly 5 to 10 miles in the span of like 5 to 10 minutes. Now, that's a whole mile per minute. It wasn't a vehicle because there were no engine sounds with it and no headlights. It wasn't human because there was not a single footstep or twig crunch or anything, even when it was right outside of our tent. It made zero noise aside from just the beeping. It didn't sound like any animal any of us knew about. And it traveled way too fast and was much too loud to be any animal. Also, some other important details were that we originally thought the sound was either a vehicle or a machine of some kind because of the consistent pattern of the beeping. However, when we stopped to listen to it for a while, there was a, a brief moment when the pattern got slightly off tempo, but it sounded sort of accidental, I guess, and quickly got back on the beat afterwards. This led us to believe that something was imitating the sound of a machine or a vehicle. We considered everything from nocturnal birds to pranksters with an air horn, but nothing really added up. We ended up waking up the next morning at 5 o'clock to just pack up and we left. The other campers who were sleeping a few yards away from us, but they were already completely gone by the time that we were getting up. And this leads us to believe that whatever was messing with us that night had messed with them pretty bad too. I wish we could have seen our friend's dog's reaction to what happened, but he had already fallen asleep by 8 or 9 p.m. long before the beeping started. It started around like 11 or 12 at night. But I recently got together with those same friends that I camped with back then and I brought up what happened that night. One of my friends too said that when the rest of us fell asleep, the same thing had happened again, but instead of a car alarm, the sound was a baby crying apparently, traveling at the same speed and distance as before. And according to her, it circled our tent a few times before fading off again. But the people camping closest to us definitely didn't have a baby as well. Of course, I'm not 100% about this detail because I don't remember her telling us about it up until last week and the experience happened like two years ago, so it may have been misremembered or something like that, but then again, I definitely was asleep when it supposedly happened. I do remember that much. Oh, and uh, another notable detail too is that we were less than 50 miles away from Skinwalker Ranch, and if you know anything about that place, then you'll know that it is a really weird area. So I was leaving the gym the other afternoon and was awkwardly sort of exiting behind a middle-aged man. He was pretty well dressed to be exiting a gym, but he held the door open for me, then began keeping pace with me when I headed toward the direction of my car that it was parked in. He began talking to me, just sort of politely at first, and I realized that he had a strong accent, like a European one. I'm pretty bad with recognizing the specific ones, but he quickly changed the conversation from normal small talk to asking me if I was single. I was flattered, but I quickly said no, and I tried to speed up. But he kept pace with me. He seemed, I don't know, upset by this, and moved a little closer to my side as we walked through the parking lot. Would you leave him for me? You're beautiful. I could take good care of you, he said. I know I made a face because he grinned like he knew that I was uncomfortable but was also sort of excited by it. I said to him, I'm in a happy relationship, thanks. I deadpanned seeing that my car was just four more spaces down and considered running for it. There was also no one else in the parking lot but us. Would you give me your number? He was already taking out his phone. I'll text you so you'll have mine, in, in case you change your mind. Um, no thank you, I quickly said. If you'll excuse me. I sped up again, and thankfully he stopped at the car one pace before where I was parked. I sort of half-jogged to my car, risking a glance back toward him. He was watching me intently. My gut told me that he was waiting to figure out which car was mine. But as I unlocked the door, I... Saw him start speed walking toward me. Sped up by fear now, I jumped into my car and immediately locked the doors. I quickly turned my key and threw my car into reverse as he suddenly was at my door. But without even checking what was behind me, I hit the gas and pulled out of the space. And when I did, 
I saw him pull his phone back out and seemingly take a picture as I accelerated away from him. I was shaking with fear as I pulled out of the parking lot. I didn't have any pepper spray and I didn't have a weapon on me either. To be honest, I don't know what he would have done if he had reached me before I could lock my door, but I'm afraid that he got a picture of my license plate or something. I don't know what he was doing. Part of me thinks that maybe this was a, a trafficking attempt or something, or maybe he was just a creep. Either way, I won't be going back to that gym anytime soon. That's for sure. When I was around seven years old, my mum and I lived in these apartments in a border town. My mum's a single mother, and in our apartment complex, like most, it had a playground in it. Luckily, our apartment was on the bottom floor and right next to the playground. And like most kids, I loved playing there. Every day I would play there, and I honestly can't remember, but my mum either went inside the apartment to grab something or let me play alone, but... While she was gone, a random lady approached me. I'd never seen this lady before, but she told me that she had a huge Barbie doll house and a lot of toy Barbies. She told me that she lived not too far and asked if I wanted to go and play. I remember saying I have to ask my mum first, and that's when she said that she knew my mum and that it's okay. I didn't know any better and I agreed to go. She grabbed my hand and led me to her house. She did have a lot of Barbie toys too, and I was playing, but she didn't have other children around, so I'm not sure why she had all those dolls. Apparently I was gone for some time because it started to get dark, and that's when there were loud bangs on the front door. The lady opened the door, and it was my mum. She looked so frightened. She grabbed me and moved me out of the apartment complex soon after that happened, and honestly... I don't really remember what happened after that. This memory came back to me not long that This memory came back to me not that long ago and my mum told me that that was the worst thing that has ever happened. But I don't remember feeling afraid. Honestly, who knows what that lady had planned for me. Since we live like five minutes from the Mexican border, it is known for trafficking children and I could have easily been taken to Mexico and never seen again. My mum did tell me that the only reason that she found me was because a bystander saw me walk off with that lady and then saw my mum frantically looking for me and who knows what would have happened if that person hadn't have seen me that day. So it was about 2000 or 2001. My best friend and I were 12 to 13 years old. We lived in a small town in rural Minnesota, about 2,000 people. Out of our friend group, her and I were the only two that lived out in the country, so we understood the boredom that could ensue, but the fun things that would come out of it. Exploring the woods, running around in the cornfields, creating forts, exploring the abandoned house on their property, etc. It was a really fun time for us. But one day, we decided to take our bikes and ride down some gravel roads. Her little brother tagged along. He was maybe, I don't know, 9 or 10 at the time. But we were riding along, laughing, probably picking on her brother, when we see an old shack in one of the cornfields. The corn wasn't fully grown yet, so we were able to see most of it. But we decide to explore it because, I mean, why not, right? I'm now 33, so bear with my memory. I don't remember much about the outside, but I do remember what I saw inside and... It still gives me the creeps to this day. We peered inside and the first thing that I noticed were posters on the wall of the room. They were on every wall as well. There was a different person on every poster and they looked angry. Some held guns pointed right at you. Some were pointing their finger and it felt like they were pointing right at us with their eyes trained on us. In the center of the floor was a perfectly painted red circle as well. My friend and I, we remember a star in the middle of it, but her little brother just remembers the circle. And as we were staring at this creepy scene, I feel like we're all of a sudden being watched, and not by the posters. 
I look to my right across the gravel road and into the cornfield across from us. And standing in the middle of the field, all of a sudden, is a man. He's just watching us. He's not waving his arms, not yelling at us, just watching. I quickly alert my friends and we look at him together. I awkwardly sort of wave and he continues to just stand there, no wave back. We are sufficiently creeped out so we jump on our bikes to get away. We're on gravel which isn't easy to bike on so it's taking us a while to get going. We bike away and I repeatedly turn around to see if he's still there and he is still watching us. In fact he barely moved and I only turned his body slightly to angle in our direction to keep watching. I still can't get over how he just appeared in the middle of the field like that too. I have no idea how we didn't see him in the first place. But recently I've been thinking about this. So my friend, her brother and I started a group chat. We all shared what we remembered and they basically said everything that I did above. What I didn't know though was that they went back the next day. And apparently when they did, everything was gone. Even the red paint on the floor. A week later, whoever owned it donated it to the fire department to be burnt. I don't know what was going on in that shack. Some thoughts have been like weird rituals, target practice for some militia dude, or just some weird creepy guy who had terrible taste. Whatever it was, it still weirds me out to this day, and the fact that everything disappeared only makes it that much more creepy, I guess. So three of my friends and I drove to Breezewood as a staging ground for a nice nighttime tour of the abandoned PA Turnpike. It's a long underground tunnel that cuts through the mountains. In the spirit of October, we decided to check it out late at night, so we set off from our hotel in Breezewood around maybe 10.30. To get ourselves even more psyched up, I played some creepy music along the way as we entered the dark forest. We arrived at the entrance of a trail that leads to a section of the Sidling Hill Tunnel about maybe 15 minutes later. But for the next hour and a half, it was mostly chill. We walked to the tunnel entrance, explored a little side room and overall messed around in the tunnel by laughing at all the funny graffiti and taking cursed videos. When we reached the end of the tunnel though, we spent maybe 10 minutes looking around for a way up to the ventilation room. We couldn't find a path outside and the staircase leading up was destroyed. We turned around to being our long walk back but within 5 minutes of backtracking, we noticed something when we all turned off our lights in the tunnel. There was a faint light shining behind us. Out of what seemed to be sheer instinct, I guess, two of my friends began running, more of a jog than a sprint. But me and the other friend kept up, and eventually we slowed down and made our lights as dim as possible. At first I was unsure of why we were being so paranoid, but one of my friends later pointed out how it's better to not take any chances of encountering someone past midnight in such a secluded area so it made sense. What added to our suspicion though was how the people, we assumed that it was at least two, behind us were not only pursuing us, but we could tell that they were running by how their lights were bouncing, but how they occasionally called out into the darkness of the tunnel, and how they occasionally blacked out like we did. Our fast walk turned into a full-blown sprint after we eventually hear a very loud resonant metallic sound, like a huge gong being struck, which of course was amplified and reverberated by the tunnel's acoustics. Even while sprinting, I saw their light behind us bouncing up and down as if they too were running and getting closer now. We got out of the tunnel, shaken by what had just happened, and reflected on how suspicious it was that not only they pursued us, but also turned off their lights from time to time. We were also confused about the source of what could only be described as a loud gong, a friend jokingly brought up cultists, but I assumed that they were just messing with some loose metal pipes. We all made it home with no sign of them pursuing us outside of the tunnel, but I'm glad that we didn't take the chance of trying to encounter them face to face. I've given it some thought over the years, and whatever those people were up to, it definitely didn't seem good. Uh, 
I was uh, eight years old when we first moved into the house on the edge of the forest. My parents had their doubts about buying a house with a backyard bordered by forest. They had concerns about wild animals getting into our bins and stuff or hurting our dogs and were worried one of us might go too far into the trees and get lost. But it was cheap. My dad liked the seclusion, my mum loved the house itself, and my siblings and I, we were excited about playing in the backyard and exploring the forest. I guess our first sign that something wasn't right was that our dogs were absolutely terrified of that forest. They never went into the forest for any reason. If a toy that they'd been playing with found its way past the tree line, they would refuse to retrieve it. And when one of us went in, they would pace anxiously until we returned. On occasion, we'd notice the dog staring at a spot in the forest in obvious distress, sometimes growling or even barking, but we could never really see anything there. My brother once carried one of the dogs into the trees to show her that there was nothing scary about it, but she wriggled out of his grip and sprinted into the house in a panic. If we were in the backyard when it was getting dark, we would also sometimes hear noises like, I don't know, someone was walking through the forest maybe, sticks crunching underfoot, branches being pushed aside. If we called out there, there was no response, but if we shined a flashlight around, we would occasionally catch a glimpse for just a split second of something that we could swear looked like a person walking around in the dark. Upon hearing that, my parents quickly banned us from entering the forest at all after dark, and even during the day we weren't allowed to go out of sight of the house. My sister's bedroom window actually looked out at the backyard and the forest beyond, and she remembers looking out her window one night and seeing a shadowy figure standing right at the edge of the backyard. But she said that there was something wrong with it. Like, it wasn't quite standing on the ground, but... It was a little too tall to be a person, and it was sort of distorted, she said. But she was convinced that it was staring straight at her. She called out for our dad, saying that there was a man in the yard staring through her window, and when he ran outside to chase off whoever it was, she continued to watch the figure. It didn't move away, but when the light from our dad's flashlight passed over it, it just suddenly wasn't there anymore, she said. We also regularly heard knocking at the back door at night, with no one there. My parents thought that it was teenagers playing pranks and stopped bothering even opening the door at one point. Until one rainy night, when the knocking was so persistent, it agitated them. And my mum pointed out that there might be someone needing shelter from the heavy rain outside, but when she opened the door... Not only was there nobody there, but there were no wet footprints on the porch either. The knocking continued the whole time that we lived there. It would happen several times in the span of like a few weeks, then stop for months, and then just randomly start up again. My parents even went as far as to install security cameras, but again, there was never anyone at the door. The camera wasn't all useless though. You see... About three years into living there, my brother started having night terrors and sleepwalking. When he went sleepwalking, he would always go out the back door and start walking towards the forest. My mum, being a light sleeper, would hear the door open and would run out to get him before he made it into the forest. After the third or fourth time it happened, my brother asked to see the camera footage because he wanted to see how he looked when sleepwalking. I guess thinking that it would look funny or something but the footage showed him walking out onto the porch, then pausing as if listening to something, shaking his head, then reluctantly walking forward, as if being sort of pulled or forcefully guided by something. One evening, my dad was in the backyard, and he heard my sister calling him from the forest, seemingly in distress, thinking that she'd gone exploring in the forest and fallen over or hurt herself. He ran in and started calling to her, but quickly realized that it was way too dark to see her, and he couldn't pinpoint where her voice was coming from. He told her to wait where she was while he grabbed a flashlight, and when he ran back into the house for the flashlight, he saw my sister 
inside, safe and completely unconcerned. At the time, my dad hadn't told us about hearing my sister's voice in the forest, so when I heard my mum's voice coming from the forest months later while I was outside with the dogs one evening, I myself didn't question it despite the fact that I'd seen my mum inside recently and hadn't noticed her walk past me. My mum was calling to me saying that she'd gotten her sweater caught in some branches and needed me to come in and help her. As I walked in though, the dog started barking, alerting my dad who saw me through the window wandering into the forest. He quickly came outside and called to me and I said that I was just helping mum. But he yelled back that mum was inside and I needed to run back to the house as fast as I could. Which upon hearing that, I did. It was after this too that my parents had a fence built around the backyard and started looking for a new place. In the time between the fence being built and us moving out, man, it got way worse. We'd hear knocking at the door more regularly as well as tapping on the windows now, as if someone was walking around the perimeter of the house and trying every window. We would often hear scratching and scraping sounds on the fence and voices beyond it. My brother's night terrors got way more frequent, and one night, my mum didn't hear the door open when he went sleepwalking, and he woke up standing at the fence, staring into the forest, with the dogs barking at him. The last morning we spent there, less than four years after we moved in, we woke up to find the back door fully open, and the security camera footage showed that it just slowly swung open on its own. Since moving out, my brother's sleepwalking has stopped, though he still gets night terrors and he suffers from pretty severe anxiety now. A few nights ago, he called me out of the blue and, after a bit of small talk, he asked me if I think the door being open that final night means whatever was out there finally got in. He was trying to make light of it, saying that he was getting into the spirit of Halloween, joking about how maybe we should all get exercised, just in case something latched onto us all those years ago. But I think that he's deeply bothered by everything that happened, to be honest. I know that I am a little bit still, and I still get nervous around dark wooded areas. I don't know what I think was out there in the forest behind our house at night, but... I get the feeling, given the chance, it would have swallowed us whole.